Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Roll and Move Reviews. My name is Kirk, I'm your host. As always, thank you so much for watching. Today we're going to talk about a game that is the sequel or the spin-off to a game I haven't reviewed yet called Castle Panic. The game we are going to discuss is called Dead Panic, where Castle Panic has a high fantasy theme. They took it in this one, turned it into a zombie game. Now I know at first glance that it may look like just a cheap attempt to cash in on the zombie craze, and maybe that's true, I don't know, but I can't say it's not a case of them just slapping on a fresh coat of paint on an old game to try and turn it into something new. Uh, while this shares a lot of the core mechanics of Castle Panic, it does bring a lot of th new things to the table. So if you played Castle Panic before and you haven't played this one yet, stick around and see how this one plays because it is a lot different. But is it any fun? Let's check it out. In this game you're going to take on the role of one of these characters. There's eight characters to select from. And each one has their own special ability they can use within the game. Uh, this, these characters are represented by these little standees here. You put them in the cabin here to start the game in the middle of the board. You've got these cardboard walls protecting you for the time being. Then you have the uh, board sliced up in these six different pie pieces. And then you have three rings, woods, clearing, and yard. Uh, anytime you have to place something on the board, you're going to roll a six-sided die. And whatever you roll, that's where you place it. Uh, beginning of the game, each section gets one zombie to start. The goal of the game is to collect these different radio pieces and then build your radio together, put it together. And then when that, once that's done, you can call in this van. Doo, 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 doo. This comes into the rescue, saves everybody. Uh, you drive off into the sunset, hopefully. On your turn, characters can do a lot of different things. Uh, while you're in the cabin, you can draw these cabin cards. And uh, these mostly weapons, but some things that help you out otherwise, uh, different equipment and things. Those can only be drawn within the cabin. Uh, you can move. If you're in the same spot with somebody, you can trade cards. Uh, you can use the cards. You can use the weapons to attack. Uh, you can use the items for whatever other beneficial purpose they serve. Uh, but that's the other things you can do. Uh, once everybody's taken their turn, you draw an event card. And... The event card will tell you how many zombies to put down. Uh, if there's a number sign that just tells you the number of players you have, that's how many you put down. Uh, but some of them have different things. Sometimes you roll. Sometimes they'll be uh, specific to the card and uh, the effect takes place. But uh, basically, you play zombies and you resolve the card. It's usually something really bad for you. Makes the zombies uh, tougher, makes their job easier. Uh, when you're going to draw, this, we have a three-player game here. On that card, we would draw three zombies out of this nice little zombie bag. We'd roll to place them, and just put them on the board wherever you roll. Now the zombies will move. If they can't see or hear anybody outside the cabin, they're all just going to move towards the cabin. But if somebody's outside and they can see them, let's see somebody was here. All these guys would have moved over here trying to get to him. So basically you can use people's bait, draw them in, uh, because anytime they can see or hear you, they're going to try and get to you. Also in that bag, besides zombies, there are some things to help you. Uh, basically you have these survivor tokens. Uh, those will be in there with the zombies. If you draw them, you place them the same way. You roll and put them on the board. And these guys are the ones that are going to bring you the radio pieces. So say he's here. Um, three ways they can get you the radio. They can move in to the cabin and drop a piece or you can go out to them and take the piece from them or what's much more likely to happen the zombies are going to kill them turn them into a zombie and then you are going to have to go find the piece that they drop once all three pieces of the board or I'm sorry of the radio are collected and put together like I said that's when you call in the van. You place that wherever you roll for it, and whoever has the radio can move that around through the woods, but it has to stay in the woods or it can't come any closer. You have to go to it. So everybody who's still alive is going to rush to the van and hopefully get out alive. If before that you're killed by the zombies, you become a zombie. You flip your card over, and now you're a zombie. You can't win the game anymore, but you can stop everybody else from winning. You get a couple of zombie powers to uh, choose from, and now you're on the attack. If all the survivors make it into the van, all the surviving characters make it into the van, then they all win. If everybody turns into zombies, everybody loses. That's how you play. 
Overall, I rate Dead Panic as a pretty solid co-op that does a pretty good job of capturing that zombie theme. I won't take too much time to compare Castle to Dead Panic until I've reviewed them both, but I will say if they had just taken Castle Panic as it was and slapped the zombie theme on it, it wouldn't have worked. So I really got to give them credit for taking the basics of Castle Panic, which are fun, and adding what they needed to to make it a legitimately thematic zombie game. Like I said, it carries the theme well. There are other games that do it better, but a lot of those games are heavier, uh, bigger, more time consuming. So if your group maybe isn't into that or if maybe you would be a little intimidated by that, this would be a good lightish game to play. It's not that light. There is some complexity. I'd say it's a step up from Castle Panic, but it's still a lot lighter than a lot of those big zombie games. Uh, it's a good co-op. Everybody works together. Um, you really got to work as a team to win. So if, you're, if your group's looking for that, that type of game, this would be a good one to pick up. The biggest negative to this game for me is how it scales. Because all the players take their turn before the zombies get to go, you're obviously going to have a bigger advantage the bigger group you have. Uh, some of the event cards are contingent on number of players for how many zombies go down the board, but I don't think it's enough of them to offset just that, the power you have from that bigger group. Keeping with that, a lot of the player or the character abilities become less valuable if you have a smaller group. Uh, you can tell they were designed for each player to be able to kind of specialize within a larger group. The smaller the group gets and the more basic things each character has to do just to keep everybody alive, uh, the less often you're able to use a lot of those abilities and uh, the less often they become, you know, they come into play and help you. Uh, the other thing is the, the turning into the zombie mechanic and a lot of zombies try to do that and it makes sense thematically and in theory it's a good idea uh, but it's just it's not this game's fault I, I haven't seen a game that makes it work that does it well that does it perfect I don't know if there's a perfect way to do it uh, this one probably handles it the best way you can you've been turned into a zombie you've lost but now you've got to go and you can attack everybody else uh, that might be, seem a little mean-spirited to some people in some groups, but hey, you're a zombie now, you got to do what you got to do. But I don't love it. I wish there was a way for the zombies to win, uh, but again, it's hard to mechanically how to work that out. Like I said, I don't think any, any game's figured it out yet, but this game does it okay, uh, but it's, it's not perfect. Uh, but overall, I'd say, it's like I said, it's a solid co-op, good zombie game, good Halloween game um, for a group looking for a lighter game. Uh, a game where everybody has to work together really well. If that's what your group's looking for, that's what you'll play. I say it's definitely worth checking out. Dead All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Roll and Move Reviews. Please leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. And tell me what you think about Dead Panic. Don't forget, we're still celebrating Halloween all month long here. So it's not too late to leave me a comment right now. And let me know what scary games you'd like to see me review. As always, please be sure to visit our sponsor website, alterigogames.net. They're going to get you tons of great deals on whatever games you're looking for. Remember in October also we're making our big push for new subscribers. So if you've done so already, thank you so much. If, you've, if you're watching and you haven't done it, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and then tell some of your friends about us. See if you can get them to do the same. Thanks for your support. Can't do it without you. We really appreciate it. If you want to watch some of my older videos, please check them out on Facebook, YouTube, Board Game Geek, or the Ultra Good Game site. That's all i got for this time, guys. Until I see you again. Have fun out there. Enjoy your weekend.